Hello viewers, this is teacher Peter Ekadja, a teacher of St. Joseph's Vocational School and teaching chemistry and mathematics. I am going to be taking you through mathematics tutorials and for now we are going to begin with all level mathematics. The main topic for today is going to be SADS and before we go to the content itself, uh, the details below describe how easily you can access me or the content that I'm going to present to you. On YouTube, you can go and type the word eMath learning platform. You will surely find this content there and endeavor to subscribe in case you want to continue receiving updates when I add on more content on the platform of YouTube. The telephone number are also here below and the second one is available on WhatsApp. So you can also feel free to reach me on it. Uh, let's go direct to the topic now. Thirds. We shall begin by defining. Now a third is an irrational root of a rational number. But if we're talking about a rational number, what do we mean? A rational number is a number that can be expressed in the form a out of b, where a and b are integers having no common divisor and b should not be equals to zero. When you see this equal sign with a cross, it means b should not be equals to zero. Now, why are we saying b should not be equals to zero? It is because if it becomes zero, then a over b becomes undefined mathematically. Remember, any number divided by zero in mathematics does not exist or it is not defined. Let's look at examples of, a few examples of rational numbers. I'm giving just three of them and there are very many others. For example, two out of three, three out of four, five out of nine, etc. Now, it is also important to note what an irrational number is. Now, an irrational number is a number that cannot be expressed as an integer, a terminating decimal, or a recurring decimal. Get the three points clearly. It cannot be expressed as an integer, a terminating decimal, or a recurring decimal. For example, root 2 gives us the whole of this 1.414213562 and so on. You realize that this value does not give us a terminating nor does not give us a terminating or a recurring decimal. So it means we cannot express it as a fraction because it is neither terminating nor recurring. Let's look at a few examples of SADS. Now, there is an example of SADS that we could begin with. For example, root 2, root 3, root 5, root 6, 2 root 2, etc. Now, the issue here is that you should just have a root with a number inside it, which is a non-square number. In other words, a number that is not 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, etc. Those are the examples of square numbers that I'm trying to give. So if there is any other number apart from those numbers I've given out in the square root, then that whole value becomes a third. Uh, we can move on to simplification of thirds. Now worked examples, number one. We think express the following in the form a root b and state the values of a and b in each case. Now root 24 is our part a. Now root 24, as you look at it, the concept we are going to use here is expressing 24 as the product of two numbers where one number is a non-square number and one number is a square number. For example, 6 times 4 gives 24. So if we try to separate uh, we shall have a root of 6 times a root of 4. Remember, this mathematics is only true for multiplication because we had multiplication here and also division, but not true with addition and subtraction. So should you get the square root of 4, which is 2, we remain with root 6. Now, the non-square number will always keep in the square root. And so when we multiply the 2, this 2 here will multiply the coefficient of the square root 
which is the silent one. So 2 times 1 will give us a 2, then we say root 6. So that silent one can always be kept silent, like we're saying. So the final answer there becomes 2 root 6. Now, conclusion. So we can now conclude that root 24 is as good as 2 root 6, where our a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 6. Why are we saying this? Because we are comparing this, we are comparing this with what they gave us here. That is what we are comparing. So if you try to compare them, you realize a corresponds to 2 and b corresponds to 6. We can proceed to part b. Part b now has square root of 108. What you do here? You still break 108 into a product of a non-square number and a square number. In this case, a non-square number is 3 and a square number is 36. But we know that we can break it down and say this is as good as root of 36 times root of root of 3. But root of 36 is 6 and the root of the non-square number will keep with its root. So finally, we still multiply the 6 by the silent one here to give us 6, then root 3 is maintained. So finally, we can conclude that root of 108 or root of 108 is the same as 6 root, two, root 3. And if you compare again with the previous form they gave us in the question, you realize A will be 6 and B will be 3. Let's look at part C. It is still the same concept. 180 under square root can also be as good as the square root of 36 times 5, which is the same as the square root of 36 times the square root of 5. But the square root of 36 is 6, and since 5 is a non-square number, we leave it in our square root sign. So this gives us 6 root 5. So we can now conclude that root 180 is the same as 6 root 5 where our a is equal to 6 and b is equal to 5 by comparison with the previous case in the question. Let's look at part d. It's quite interesting. Part d says root 5 plus root 20. Now when you look at root 5, if you express it as a product of two numbers where 1 is a square number, then the only option you would have would be 5 multiplied by 1. But the square root of 1 is merely 1. And that is why it would be convenient enough to leave root 5 the way it is. But for 20, we can say it is a product of 4, where 4 is a square number, and 5, where 5 is a non-square number. But remember, the square root of 4, I'm trying to shorten the steps here, the square root of 4 is 2, and 5 being a non-square number uh, remains under a square root. So now you add root 5 plus 2 root 5. There is a silent one here. So this one, which is the coefficient of this root, adds up to the 2, which is the coefficient of this root, to give you 3. But remember, root 5 is a common factor. And that is when you come up with 3 root 5. Uh, the next step automatically is your conclusion. You conclude that root 5 plus root 20 is as good as 3 root A. And if you compare with the previous instruction, A still becomes 3 and b becomes 5. So that is the concept. We can even follow it in part e as we can see. But e is still the same. But e is still the same. Only that here now we can see that 54 can also be expressed as a product of 9 and 6, where 9 is a square number and 6 is an unsquare number. 150 is as good as 25 by 6. 25 is a square number and 6 is an unsquare number. 24 can be expressed as 4 by 6, where, where 4 is a square number and 6 is a non-square number. So what do you realize? 9 is a square number, so its square root is 3. We remain with root 6. 25 is a square number, its root is 5. We remain with root 6. 4 is a square number, its root is 2. So we remain with root 6. Then here, we just add and subtract. How are you going to add? Look at the coefficient here is 3 plus 5, which is 8, then minus 2, which is 6. But remember, the common factor all through is root 6. So it will be 6 root 6 being our final result or answer for that. Then finally, you draw your conclusions as we have written here.
We are still stating the values of A and B because the question is up to part E, it is still continuing. And that is why we are still continuing to state the values of A and B. In case they didn't ask you to state the values of A and B, then you would stop at this very level. Let's move on. So now you can try and also work out this on your own to find out whether you can actually get the same answer with me as I did it here. In part G is also the same, same concept, only that I love now part G because we have now two here, we have also three here, but the concept remains on what is still inside the square root. Express 45 as a product of two numbers. One should be a square number, which is 9. One should be a non-square number. Look at 20, 4 by 5, 4 is a square number, 5 is a non-square number. 80, 5 by 16, but 16 is a square number and 5 is a non-square number. So should you do the mathematics again, square root of 9 is 3. So the 3 will multiply the 2 to give us the 6, then root 5, because 5 is a non-square number. Uh, come to this. Uh, now you come to 2 root 5, it is obtained by getting the square root of 4, which is 2, and root 5 remains there because 5 is a non-square number. Then for this case, the square root of 16 is 4, so when the 4 comes out, it multiplies the 3 to give us uh, 12, only that we have a minus as our sign there, then root 5. Should you do the subtraction, 6 plus 2 will give you 8, and 8 minus 12 will surely give you negative 4, root 5. So that if you do that, uh, you still conclude to this result, and our A will be 4, then B will be Five. So we can now move to number two, where we have something interesting. Now here we just want to try to see how to simplify. Now when we look at these two brackets, the only difference we can see is that the signs are different. This bracket has a minus and this has a plus. But remember, remember that these can be considered as a difference of two squares. So what do we do? We just get, we simply get the seven squared and we subtract three root two squared as we have done here. And that is why you see I've clearly indicated here that it is a difference of two squares. So seven squared is 49. Then this square is squares both the three and the root two. This is where common mistakes always arise from. So the square squares the three to give us nine. It also squares the root two to give us two. And if you multiply 2 by 9, it will give you the 18. Then you do the subtraction. 49 minus 18 will give us 31. And therefore, we can conclude that the product of these two brackets uh, will give us 31 as our answer. So we are just simply applying a difference of two squares. But B. But B, it is still the same thing as you see. Uh, the sign is the only difference. Negative, positive. So it is still going to be root 2 squared minus 2 root 3 squared. Should you square normally like we have explained in part A, you will come up with your negative 10 as the answer. Uh, part C is still also the same because we still have the sign as the difference. The main difference is positive and negative. So you simply square the 5, the root 5 I beg your pardon, and you square the 2 root 4. So should you do that, you will have 5 here. Here we shall have 4 because 2 squared is 4. Then root 4 squared gives you 4. So 4 times 4 is 16. So we shall have the next step as 5 minus 16. And that is negative 11. Finally, you conclude and that is our final answer. When we move to part D, it is quite unique because it is not only the, the signs this time around. But actually what we have in this bracket is not what we have in this bracket. What do you do in this case? What do you do in this case? You are going to multiply normally. So what you're going to do is this two, the first two we have here, will multiply the whole of this bracket. That is why we're saying two into the whole of that bracket. Then you come up with this sign that you had here. It is a positive, I say plus. Then root three will also multiply the whole of this bracket. That is why you say you have two root, you have two root, sorry, two into three minus root three plus root 3 into 3 minus root 3. Then you open the brackets appropriately. So 2 by 3 is 6. Then 2 by 
root 3 will be negative 2 root 3 because we have a minus there then 3 root 3 times 3 will give us 3 root 3 and root 3 times root 3 will be as good as root 3 squared which is root 3 because the square cancel to the square root or you would as well say root 9 but root 9 remember is 3 and that is how we came up with the 3 you see here should you try to simplify 6 and negative 3 like terms so 6 minus 3 will give you 3 negative 2 root 3 plus 3 root 3 will give you positive root 3 why because the 3 plus the negative 2 will give you positive 1 then there is a common factor which is root 3 so you get 1 by the common factor and that gives you root 3 uh, so when you do that you will finally come up with our final answer as 3 plus root 3 but e same concept they are also different numbers so what you do get the 3 multiply it by this bracket get the root 2 multiply it by this bracket please try out this and see whether you come up with the same answer like the one i do have let's move on to rationalization of denominators now rationalization of denominators is the process of converting an irrational denominator to a rational denominator for example a number such as 1 over root 5 can easily be evaluated by first expressing it with a rational denominator now how do we do this we basically look at the denominator we have our denominator is root 5 so if we are to rationalize this we would multiply this number here by root 5 of over root 5 such that you don't create the me any, any different meaning you don't change the meaning in the mathematics so it means it would be 1 out of root 5 times root 5 out of root 5 and if you see that the root 5 and the root 5 which will be the denominator will give us 5 and that is a rational number so it means we shall have expressed it with a rational denominator now let's look at an example 2 over root 3 what can we say about 2 over root 3 now if you to, ex to rationalize this simply multiply by root 3 over root 3 so 2 times root 3 will give you 2 root 3 and root 3 by root 3 will give you 3 so it means our final answer will be 2 root 3 out of 3 so now our third has a rational denominator which is 3 Part B. Part B is also the same concept. Do not be confused by the square roots appearing in both the denominator and the numerator. Our focus is looking at the denominator. So you multiply still by root 3 over root 3 like we did in the previous number. Now root 2 times root 3, since they are all under square roots, you simply multiply the numbers in the square roots to give you our product which is going to be 6. Then root 3 times root 3, like we said earlier, can be the same as root 3 but squared, which can give us the power cancelling with the square root, and so we remain with 3. Someone would as well say root 3 times root 3 is the same as root 9, but root 9 is also 3, giving you the same result. So this gives us this conclusion, and now we can say that root 2 out of root 3 is actually as good as root 6 out of 3 but c is the same concept so you could try out multiply by root 2 out of root 2 both up and down and you will still find the same answer that we have here now we could look at part d it is still the same only that here i've added a coefficient which is more than one and that is two what do you do still maintain the concept we can multiply either by 2 root 2 up and down or you can still multiply by only the root of 5 so that is why here i've maintained the root of 5 out of the root of 5 for consistency from the from the previous examples so if you do that or you multiply by 2 root 2 sorry 2 root 5 out of 2 root 5 you will still come up with the same result as 3 root 5 out of 10 so you would not get any challenge now let's look at number uh, this should be number three. Uh, this should be number three. So I'd like to adjust on that. So number three, they are telling us to evaluate without using a calculator, correct for significant figures. Given root two is this, 
and root 3 is this. Now, normally when they say without using a calculator, students get challenges. They feel they should not use it at all. But the simplest reason as to why they told you not to use a calculator is because is because someone can easily press this in the calculator and someone can easily press this in the calculator and and get the answer. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What you do, you first do the rationalization normally by multiplying by root 2 over root 2. Then after you substitute for root 2, which was given as 1.4141, Substitute, then kindly press your calculator, get your answer, and remember to express it to the required number of significant figures because it was mentioned in the question. Uh, so that is the concept. So when they say without using a calculator, they simply want to see some simple mathematics that you're going to apply on before you actually press it. The same thing applies to part B. Simply rationalize, reach this level here, Substitute for root 3, substitute for root 3, have 1.731. Then, after you kindly press your calculator, get your answer, express the final answer to four significant figures. The same thing applies to part C and even part D. Now, dear viewers, this is our general exercise for all that we have studied in this tutorial. Please try it out and where you find a challenge, feel free to get me from the details I gave you at the beginning of this lecture or tutorial. Uh, in case of any challenges, I will always be there. What's up? The number is already given to you on the screen from the beginning of this video. And maybe to help you when you're playing these videos, you simply play and pause, especially when you want to write down something. Simply play and pause. That is when you will be able to gain out of it. Otherwise, thank you for being nice viewers. Thank you for being good listeners. And have the best of your day. May God bless you. I remain Peter Ekaja, the teacher of math, chemistry from St. Joseph's Vocational School, Mbarara.